Okay, so uh, welcome to class five. This is what we'll be covering. Yada, yada, yada. So first off, low development environment. Okay, so um, local development environment is basically this. Um, in our next uh, project, we'll be creating a WordPress site, um, which was basically kind of like your last uh, project in um, your last project in uh, Web Design One. Uh, except this time, we're going to be doing it a little bit more advanced uh, and using more industry standard um, themes and such. Um, so anyway. Uh, we're going to be using WordPress, and normally when you work in WordPress, you work online. Uh, it's meant to be online, so it needs that that basic environment uh, that it can access all the things it needs to that way. The technologies that are built into it are built to be online. Uh, but what we're going to do instead, um, same as what we did again in the, uh, Web Design 1, is we are going to create a local environment, which basically means that you're going to create a sort of... Um, uh, you're gonna you're gonna install all the technologies and stuff onto your computer, and it's gonna give the like a, a pseudo online environment that you know you go in the browser and it will look like a site, but it will actually be hosted locally, not on a server far you know across the internet and stuff. Now there are some advantages to this. Um, first things first, uh, there's no hosting, or you know you need to uh, rent a server, and there's no domain, which basically means you don't have to pay for either one of those. Um, domains are cheap, but the server, you know, that's upwards of $150 a year. Um, that gets kind of pricey. So uh, you don't have to pay that up front. Um, obviously, for students, that's particularly good because that we don't have to worry about doing that. Although it would be good for you to get some experience doing that if this is something you want to do. Um, it's not a requirement. Um, but that's also nice, too, even if you weren't a student because it basically you can start making the site for somebody. Uh, and if they haven't paid you yet or you don't have any money, you can make the site. And then once, you know, the site's completed, then you can upload it. So you're not paying for it. You're not paying for a service you haven't been using yet. Um, another thing is it's more secure. So obviously while you're working on a site, there might be the loopholes. There might be uh, just some mistakes, things like that, um, that you don't want to have uh, on the Internet so that it could potentially be... Um, you know, tacked in some way. So this way you can kind of make sure everything's solid before you actually upload it onto uh, the internet. Uh, it doesn't require internet connection, which means you can work on this uh, wherever you like. You can work on a laptop, you can work on a plane. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You don't need the internet, uh, which is nice. So again, I guess that's a uh, cost savings, although obviously what we're doing is on the internet. So, um, but it also means it should be quicker because you don't have to transfer everything to a server. Although honestly, that has not necessarily been my experience, but, uh, uh, so some things are faster, like if you have to upload images and stuff, that's faster. But I don't know. I don't. I don't find the refresh being that much quicker. Um, and obviously, it's going to look more professional because you're not going to have a half completed site um, or a completed site, <laughs> uh, a half completed site uh, live, and then one's going in there and being like, doesn't look, you know, it doesn't make you look very trustworthy and stuff. So um, those are some of the advantages. Uh, we're going to be in local by Flywheel. You can click on it here, and you know, uh, you can download it if you want. Um, on your personal computer. It should be on the school's computer, so you shouldn't have any issues there. So there are a, uh, a bunch of different options that will create these local development environments, okay? So these are them here. There is MAMP, ZAMP, uh, Desktop Server, and Local. Okay, So basically these are just um, uh, a collection of software that you install, and they will um, they'll allow you to create that, that, virtual, um, that virtual space for you, okay? Um, so uh, if you look here, because uh, there's also WAMP instead of MAMP, because I think it's like Mac, Apache, something, I don't know. Um, but MAMP was the first one that kind of came. There's also LAMP, which is Linux. Um, but that was the first one that was available. Um, if you click on this, you can see it, and you can look at that. Yay. Uh, and then there's MAMP, which is meant to be across both Mac and PC. Um, it's kind of the same thing as ZAMP. Uh, there's desktop server, which I've never used, but I do know it costs money. <laughs> so uh, you're probably not going to be as interested in that. Um, and then the last one's local by flywheel. So local is, uh, this. it's basically the same as these. They're all doing the same thing, more or less. They're they're installing um, these various uh, various technologies onto your computer and letting you make that environment. Um, local does the same thing as well. The reason why I like it is because it's very simple uh, in comparison to these other ones where it could be a little glitchy. Um, although you're going to see local is also kind of glitchy. Um, so obviously, we're going to be using local. Um, you, if you need to install the computer, you can click here, and then um, you would download it here, and then you can probably watch their videos and stuff if you need help um, installing it. I'll uh, I'll bet a video on how to install it, maybe like over here, since there's a big gap over here. Uh, maybe I'll just make a smaller window. 
um, that I'll put it. Now, when I do that, it's going to be for Windows, so you'll have to transfer it over to Windows at home. Um, and so that's what I was doing it on. But uh, so anyway, yeah, you can install it here if you want to work at home as well as school, which you may want to. Uh, best case scenario is you would just have like a laptop that you could bring both ways. Um, so you can work in school and outside of school or whatever. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to be using. That's our virtual uh, online kind of thing that we're going to be doing so we can work locally. All right. Now, WordPress is obviously the whole point of this, so we can develop WordPress. Um, the, the, you should already know what WordPress is, but just as sort of a reminder, um, it's a content management system, which basically what that means is that it allows you to manage your content, okay? Because if you look at here, that's all we're really doing in web design. It's all we're really doing in most design, is you have content you want to deliver, and you deliver it, uh, and you need to organize it in some sort of manageable way, right? So, and most of the time, it's text and it's images. Those are the two things. So this is kind of a generic statement, um, but m the way to look at it is if you've ever used Wix or um, even if you've used InDesign, right? To an extent, that's kind of like content management because you're basically putting um, images and text together and it's allowing you to kind of organize it. Um, that's basically what WordPress does, and it does it in a more, in, in an easier way. The idea was that instead of like what we have been doing in all previous time, hard coding, you do need to know that if you want to really open it up. Um, it allows you to kind of, even if you aren't a professional, you can still be able to use the internet and create sites and stuff. Um, and especially since there's so many plugins and themes and things like that, that, you know, it, it helps. But if you are professional or, you know, you're knowledgeable, you can really do some, like some amazing things with it. Okay. So there are basically two main ways that we're going to work with um, WordPress. One is the dashboard and the other is the visual editor. Okay. So the dashboard is basically the back end. Um, it's where you click on these various things. I'll show you mine. Um, so we have all these elements here. This is the, um, the, the dashboard. Okay. And it has all these different options and things that you can do. Uh, and you have all your web pages here. And so my last page. Yeah. So I can click on class five and then inside of class five, um, I can, uh, I have these different modules and stuff, and then I can just, you know, edit and type in what I want. And then that's how you get what you see here. Okay. Um, but basically, it's more back end. It allows you to do a lot of the stuff like um, setting the, the general time. Like, you know, are you East Coast, you know, Eastern Standard Time and Mountain Time and whatever. Um, uh, user access. So uh, if you are somebody who's making a website, that's something you would want to do. If like you have, a, uh, you know, a, a client, you're going to you're going to make all the design elements, but they're going to probably need to put the content in. And they're probably going to want to be able to update it. So. Um, you will give them access to only like certain things. You won't let them like completely break it on you. Uh, various things like that. You could do a lot of the settings, uh, more developer and kind of things, right? So, um, so yeah, that's this here. So you can adjust posts. So if you have a blog, um, the media, basically it's just a big folder that has all of the images and videos and whatever kind of thing, anything that you've uploaded. It doesn't actually have to be images, but it'll be in this area. Um, the pages are obviously where you create your web pages. Uh, if there are comments and stuff, we aren't really going to use that, but that obviously goes with the whole blog thing. Technically, posted pages are the same thing. They just have a different tag on them. Uh, appearance goes with all the things that deal with the look of what you have. So you can uh, you can change your menus. You can look at the change some things with the themes. You can even put in your own CSS. Um, plugins allows you to install basically added features, uh, some that will allow it to make the site easier to work with, uh, just to make it easier to create inside of WordPress, and some that just add functionality to your site. Um, or even looks or various other things. Okay. Um, users kind of already talked about them before. Um, tools allows you to import and export out your site. Not really going to use that too much. And then there's just the general settings, which we talked about before, which is kind of like the defaults and such. Okay. Um, the other way of working is the visual editor. Okay. So basically once you've logged in as admin, so if we went to my site, I do teach me cone dot flywheel sites. Um, and I'm already logged in, uh, but I'd have to do for slash admin uh, wait, wp sorry wp uh, that login there we go um it's admin yeah wp admin i don't know why i was giving me login but wp admin and i logged in then i could uh look at the visual part so let's say you're logged into your site you want to like look at this in the visual sense you can just go ahead and um Let's see where would I want to do preview changes. Let me see publish visibility edit. Where is that? Uh, I want to do preview edit. Oh, you know what? We can just click up here view view page. So you can click on this, and it's going to bring up this. 
uh, and then you can see the options up here. So this is like the visual editor because you see it has this this extra thing up here. Now you guys, when you're looking at my site, don't have this because you're not logged in underneath me. But um, using that visual editor, um, uh, depending on the site that you have, they might have different ways of working in it. Okay, so um, one is the uh, customize. So click on customize, and then depending on theme. It will give you different options in here, right? So uh, I have a different theme. Some themes have a, a really robust, but I can go to topography, and I don't think I have too much. So I can say what the default, you know, uh, fonts and stuff are, and that will change all these elements in here. Um, uh, the menus, uh, view locations. Right now I have a header one. Uh, since I made this theme, there's really not a lot of options on this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, um, you can generally do some some changes there okay so that's one way uh, of working visually and then depending on what um, plugins you have installed you can actually also do it this way so like I'm inside of uh, if, if you may have noticed before that I was using um, what's it called uh, Site builder uh, if I go live editor so this one's too uh, specifically for the one that I'm working on in here it's gonna go ahead and you can see that thing that I had over here so I can, I can adjust things over here and then view them over here. So you can see this is a little bit more visual. Um, there's another one that, uh, let's see, let's go, let's click on edit page. That'll bring me back into this. I could click on edit with Elementor. Let's do it anyway. So this will open up with Elementor. And this is another, this is just a different plugin that I have. And this one will allow me to add um, content and stuff right here and it just works a little bit differently okay so um it's a couple of options and then divi also has their own uh visual editor okay so depending on what they have you can also work on the front end so either through the um customize or through the the visual editor if your plugin or if your theme has that built into it okay so these two the uh, page builder by site origin has a that's a plugin and so is elementor Divi Builder actually is a plugin that more or less comes with the Divi theme, okay? But allows you to build sites in more or less the same way. We're going to cover that in uh, a little bit. Um, okay, so we'll call that good. I'll make another video for the Divi theme section.